so basically for your CFA level 2 you'll have the same subjects which you had for CFA level 1 CFA level 1 dekh karke now you have a very decent idea about how to go about the whole thing uh, you have 10 subjects the 10 subjects were divided into 18 study sessions now you have 17 study sessions one study session is struck off so you have a less study session to prepare 17 study sessions hai. each study session has got a lot of chapters which we call topic reviews all the chapters of the topic reviews are divided into LOSs that's your subheads you understand all these things exam format also you've seen there's no negative marking for every question you had three options you had 120 questions and 120 questions level 2 takes place only on the first uh, Saturday of the month of June there's no exam in December so if you screw up this exam you defer it by one year so make sure that you're not doing that the subjects are the same it is expected ki aapko level 1 aata hai level 2 ke le. so you cannot say that you know this was a part of level 1 syllabus so I don't need to bother about it right like say for example a normal distribution I'll use the normal distribution in one of the managing risk chapter in portfolio suppose you cannot say that normal distribution you would not taught me in level 2 so the level 1 content since the, the subjects are the same it becomes very important that you're very thorough that your base is very strong so whatever portions whatever stuff will be there for level 1 which will be used in level 2 I will be revising it along right but make sure your concept is very strong your understanding is very 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 strong level 1 was relatively easier because you had new subjects being introduced CFA is a course for finance or uh, for commerce or non-commerce students right so they were introducing all the things the derivative was a new subject portfolio was a new subject fixed income was a new subject so most of the subjects that you had was new but this time you have the same subjects so you are you already have an understanding already have a base now you will be escalating on that you'll be learning more on that so you will have to make sure that your base is very strong there is no negative marking another thing exam pattern I'll, I'll come to the syllabus I'll discuss the syllabus and you know how you're expected to study and all but before that I'll just I want you to understand what's the exam pattern exam ke liye, you have the same 9 to 12 and 2 to 5 two sessions each session will have only 60 questions you have only 60 questions you had 120 questions for 180 minutes now you have 60 questions for uh, 180 minutes so basically you're getting instead of a, a minute and a half you're getting three minutes per question but level one may generally I understand that people do not have a time crunch issue practice sessions and all the job we see that you know people do not generally have a time crunch issue when you're talking about the level one exam but when you talk about the level two exam people generally do have a time crunch issue there is a time crunch so you know the techniques and all how you should be attempting and all we'll discuss as we go about it there will be a lot of questions we'll be discussing towards the end I'll tell you about all the tricks and all that you should be using tricks but you know the, the, the techniques you can use in order to save time and all that we'll do that part but the most important part for you to understand is the level of difficulty is obviously going to be higher because otherwise why would you need double the time for ticking a question you're not writing a question it's not a written paper you have a 60 MCQ paper for a 180 minute exam so you have basically 3 minutes per question and you just need to do a circle link. you just need to shade a circle in that three minutes so obviously you're going to take much more time to do the same number of uh, to do the half number of questions and the question call level will be such that you'll have to actually understand the content really well there is no negative marking only 60 mcqs and only three options is come and no everybody does not pass your passing rates are around 40 percent 35 45 ke beach mein hota generally and understand everybody pays a lot of money to do this exam it means that everybody will prepare and give the exam unlike a lot of Indian examination where people just register for the exams and you know half-heartedly most of the people are giving these exams because there's not a lot of money at stake as well but over here you've got a year not six months it's not a June December thing it's a one-year thing and second your same subjects are there so you are expected to have a strong base and then we are building on that right in level 3 for example you will not have quants anymore in level 3 you do not have financial reporting anymore in level 3 you do not have corporate finance in level 3 you're getting it quite a few subjects have been eliminated when you move to level 3 you do not have e you have economics but not the kind of economics that you've studied you do not have economics of class 11 12 type of economics in level 3 it's very portfolio related economics so anyways the point is that level 3 we'll be chucking off a few uh, striking off a few subjects when we move to level 3 level 1 was building a base level 2 is building on that base 
यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग सो योर कॉन्सेप्ट में कोई भी गलती नहीं होना चाहिए विल डिस्कस अ फ्यू एग्जाम्पल्स आई आई गिव यू अ फ्यू एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ लेवल वन राइट नाउ एंड आई लास्ट यू क्वेश्चन विल सी हाउ मच वी अंडरस्टैंड आई गिव यू क्लैरिटी अबाउट अ फ्यू थिंग्स सो यू अंडरस्टैंड कि किस लेवल का क्लैरिटी वॉट लेवल ऑफ क्लैरिटी वॉट लेवल ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग नीड्स टू बी दे सो डू नॉट डू नॉट रिफ्रेन फ्रॉम आस्किंग क्वेश्चन डू नॉट रिफ्रेन फ्रॉम यू नो uh reading every single line and making sure that you are very thorough with every content uh a uh, quite a few changes have been made into the level 2 syllabus so we'll see that also but you this is your paper pattern another thing about the 60 mcqs is that in level 1 you had the number of questions and everything defined the first 18 questions were from ethics the next 14 questions were from quants the next 10 questions were from let's say economics was 12 questions sorry then the next six questions will be from derivatives and other four questions from alternate investments again a six question from portfolio so you had the questions segregated you knew that the first 18 has to be from ethics you knew that the next 14 had to be from quants and there was one question three options one question three options that was the pattern of level 1 level 2 ka pattern mein what will happen is you will have a passage let's say page 1 you have a whole passage page 2 the passage continues and let's say after three quarters of the page the passage ends question 1 three options question 2 three options question 3 three options so now you have what is known as item set so you'll have a page page and a half you not not a one page generally it's a two page or a one and a half page one and a quarter page you'll have a proper item set you'll have the whole data and on the basis of this whole data you will have six questions asked so you have 60 questions that means you have 10 item sets in the morning half 10 item sets in the evening half and it is not defined that one on quants one on equity one on economics it's not that way you have been given range of percentages like say for example equity is going to be 25% suppose uh, derivatives will be let's say a 10 to 15% so it could be a 10% weightage it could also be a 15% weightage so you have a total of 120 questions your question numbers are half you have to read a page and a half a quarter one and a quarter page or a two page Uh, content in order to answer six questions ha but aisa nahi hota hai that you'll be asked one question from here second from here third from here and fourth from here generally you'll have first question from the first half second question third question so your questions will be serial order basis par so they'll not irritate you on that ground generally you will not have first question using data from this part of the essay you'll have the first question from this part the second question from this part only so generally it's not going to be that you know you have the whole second question ka one data is coming from here another piece from here another piece from here so it's not going to be that complicated it might be possible in a few questions but generally it's going to be the first question then the second then the third but obviously there is a logical build of the whole uh, passage you understanding this so item set is what you are going to be using so when you are using a when you are talking about the item sets part when you are talking about the item sets part it makes it very important that you are practicing very well it makes it very important that you are practicing your uh, item sets and all very well now you have a lot of uh, places to practice from you've got your schweizer material you've got the questions behind the chapter that i don't even count that as a practice you've got 10 15 questions after the chapter which takes you hardly 5 minutes to complete yeah maybe you'll take 10 minutes to complete so that is that is like that is like a given so you that's not counted in practice when you talk about practice you'll have schweizer volume 1 schweizer volume 2 just the way you had it in part 1 uh you'll be using schweizer books as your textbooks you can purchase it you will be using schweizer books as your textbooks so we'll be referring to schweizer uh you would not need the institute material so you can order the e reader form of the institute material with the institute within the institute material i would advise you to practice certain portions there would be certain questions which i'll ask you ki okay you refer to the e reader you just practice from there all the additional notes extra whatever has to be given will be provided by me so you will need your schweizer books you will be using schweizer as your base books along with that whatever extra is required i'll either make you write small little bits and pieces here and there all the time and if there's anything extra there will be a lot of extra stuff that will be provided to you separately right so you do not need to refer to the institute material as such with respect to the practice portion like i'll tell you okay the pension chapter you need to practice from the institute material as well with this portion you need to refer to the question and answers of the institute material as well so there will be three four chapters five chapters ten, ten chapters that you will be practicing from institute material as well i do not advise you lot of people do the cd questions of schweizer or something it makes no sense because the exam of cfa is going to be on a paper pen format you will waste a lot of time because your reading speed decreases when you are reading online so it does not make sense to waste time and read and practice online and especially since the cd questions are single question answer set 
you need to practice on an item set basis because this is what is going to be required for the exam practice is going to be very important because there is a time crunch how to attempt the paper and all we'll discuss but right now we are starting off with the exams you need to practice if you do not practice you're not clearing i'm not saying if you cannot a lot of people their concepts are so strong they are very uh, quick with uh, with calculations and all they might do it without practice also in general i'm talking about a very general crowd but in general you are not going to be clearing the exam with a decent amount of practice so when you're talking about the two schweizer books it's advisable that the second practice book is completed the first practice book may be one paper is completed that's the minimum i'm talking about ki minimum four papers of schweizer needs to be done now when you talk about item sets it's possible that first five questions are from quant and the sixth question is from alternate investment so it's not that the item sets are going to be first item set from ethics second from quant third from economics it will be jumbled up so that will be a problem even within one item set you could have four questions from derivatives and two from fixed income generally they do not jumble up as in one from eco one from quant one from fixed income it's like a four five question from one part and maybe two questions from another because alternate investments and all have a relatively lower weightage there will be a couple of subjects which have a like economics has a little less weightage so you cannot afford a full item set for say a particular subject so you might put in two questions after two three study session after two two questions suppose two item sets generally they will not jumble up questions ki equity quants fixed income pura 6 mein dal diya that they will not do you getting the idea so your questions your paper pattern is going to be that way so item sets are jumbled up you might have two equity in the morning half and no equity in the evening half it's not going to be bifurcated in a very average manner in the morning and the evening session that you need to understand it's going to be jumbled up you might have two fixed income in the morning or no fixed income in the morning and two item sets on fixed income in the evening the total weightage of the morning evening paper the 120 questions total that weightage needs to be according to the weightage that has been given for level 2 a major weightage has been allocated to equity section for level 3 45 to 60 percent weightage is for portfolio. So even the fixed income is fixed income portfolio management. Equity is equity portfolio management in level three. Level three, there is a lot of portfolio related work. In level two, uh, the maximum weightage is given to the equity. It's around 25 percent. The maximum weightage that you are giving is to equity. But you have more number of subjects. You have the same number and the same subjects that you had in level one. I'll discuss the whole syllabus in detail. But the first point you need to understand is the exam pattern. So, uske liye practice is going to be very important. Apart from that, additional papers, mock tests, and all all those things we'll take care of. And and I'll be uh, mailing you. I'll be mailing you stuff. I'll be giving you a proper detail as to what other stuff you need to practice. So, like the first thing will be Schweizer book two, and maybe one more paper of. book one then i'll tell you okay the six income these these four topics you need to do all the questions of all the six papers plus institute material you cannot do all the institute material you cannot do all the six papers you cannot do all the mock papers you, it's not possible to do everything you have to understand so what so i'll give you the order of preference that at least itna hona chahiye acha ye ho gaya then you move on to this portion acha this much is done then you move on to this much portion so i'll give you an order of preference right because it makes more sense to work that way well you're following this part so uh, you'll be using your schweizer books it becomes very important your syllabus needs to be over by mid of april from my end from your end it needs to be completed by end of april i'm expecting usse zyada delay nahi hona chahiye and you'll have another month to prepare to revise revision is going to be very important otherwise you'll not retain it in the exam you'll need a, a the last 20 days you can revise 15 days 20 days because a lot of people are working along with uh, uh, the the course and uh, in the last 4 5 days you need a very quick revision so you'll get your summary sheets you'll get your formula sheets summary sheets and all that so you can use that that will be quite handy but you need to make your content also in such a manner i'll make you write also like say for example uh, there's a one and a half page example given in the question schweizer ka specially with the example ka solutions and all it's very tedious it's very lengthy they've gone about doing it in very bad methods like for those who've been with me in level 1 they understand like a one page solution i can make you do in one line or two lines so we'll do those things because exam time you cannot revise a half page and a half ka solution you'll just look at those two lines so make sure that while you're studying for the first time you're understanding so well you'll take 3 hours to do something right now you'll take only an hour when you revise it but you have to manage your content that way because revision is going to be very important and you cannot compromise on understanding a single line any even a single line you're reading you have a problem you need to get back to me like a pension will be one chapter 
that's the one of the most difficult chapters of your uh, level 2 content i'll line by line i'll make you understand in level 1 i did that with alternate investments for them in level 1 i made them understand with alternate investments i made uh, these guys understand with with line by line everything you need to understand right so so the content needs to be very thorough because there's no uh, there's no negative marking but then i'm not trying to scare you guys off it's 35% plus is your past percentage agar understanding thorough hai a decent level of practice is done your understanding is thorough you'll clear the exam you not you cannot panic you you have to be very calm and composed when you're giving the exam a lot of people panic i'll help you out on that also but uh, as long as your content is decent you'll not panic also but time management is going to be important so you will need to practice like level 1 lot of people manage even without practicing quite a good number of people take it a little lightly manage without practice and all but level 2 will not work that way you'll have to practice right so i'll i'll tell you in which order to practice and how much to practice from where to practice and how and all i'll do that like say for example when we start off let's say we are starting off with corporate finance so once i'm done with corporate finance you can easily pick up let's say i pick up paper 4 5 6 i do let's say paper 5 like schweizer ka second half of paper whatever item sets i'll just flip through it the item set that is on corporate finance i'll take that in the beginning of the paper they tell you question 1 to 6 is from this subject question 2 7 to 12 is from this subject question 13 to this is from this subject so in the exam they'll tell you how many item sets are from which uh, subjects which areas in general so from for 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 uh, for the papers you can always see as a corporate finance is the fourth item set in this paper so maybe paper 4 5 6 you should be doing once i'm done with corporate finance in the class you study corporate finance from your books from your schweizer so whatever i'm doing you just update that much and that will be sufficient so if i have completed corporate finance in let's say two weekends the next weekend ke pehle pehle you should try and complete corporate finance and while i'm doing let's say the second topic i pick up is derivatives while i'm doing derivatives you are practicing corporate finance ka let's say you know two three papers you are done so you can do two two and a half or three papers by the time i am completing the syllabus once the syllabus is over you are just left to practice two three more papers obviously you should be practicing more but i'm talking about the bare minimum that you need to do four papers bare minimum karna padega you'll have to you're getting it okay so let's just discuss the syllabus along with the syllabus i'll keep on asking you a few questions so let's see how how well placed you were with part 1 any questions with respect to the exam paper you're getting the idea of what the format is going to be so a lot of changes are there in your syllabus so let's start with the first book let's discuss the first book so when you look at the first book you've got two study sessions on ethics one on quants and the fourth one on economics when you look at ethics study <coughs> sorry just give me a second sorry when you look at the ethics study session ethics ka first study session is going to have the exact same seven standards that you covered in level 1 seven standards ka you'll get those sheets and all do not be over confident that there are the same seven study uh, uh, standards and therefore i need not practice do not be over confident right uh, i tell my students this one quite a few times i've told them in level 2 level 3 past batches also cfa's uh, seven standards and caia seven uh, they have six standards except for the last one it's very similar it's almost it's 90% same so when i was appearing for my caia exams i was done with the three levels of cfa and i had already started teaching so i had quite a bit of a grasp on ethics but uh, just about 5 7 days before the exams i realized when i did a paper i saw that the scores were very bad the point i'm trying to make is whether on i am thorough with the content i've done it three times when i am studying and i've done it quite a few times when i'm teaching you guys because for the three levels i have to teach ethics again and again generally i keep a joint class for ethics level 2 and 3 so the point is that if you do not practice ethics is not going to work because even after having done it three four times i needed to practice a little bit thankfully i saw that paper seven eight days before so i could practice a little bit and i could clear my exam you understanding the idea ethics ke liye practice is very important so do not be over confident that i know the same seven standards and therefore do not miss out on the practicing part of ethics because ethics is not because you have seven standards you already know what the seven standards are there's nothing much to do but the practice part has to be done let me ask you a simple question seven standards to samjhane ka kuch hai nahi because aapko pata hi hai kya hai let me ask you a simple question what is the difference between independence and objectivity 
that is standard one part b that's your professionalism part b independence and objectivity and additional compensation arrangement that is your duty towards employers part b again i guess loyalty uh, additional compensation arrangement duties to uh, of sub, uh, supervisors so that's your duty towards employers part b think object independence and objectivity you're not not allowed to accept gifts and all but under additional compensation arrangement you can accept gifts what's the difference you guys don't ha huh, bolo objectivity you can not accept gifts gifts from the uh, subject of return correct and in this you can accept it from the uh, from your client not from the from the client so independence and objectivity you cannot accept any gifts token gifts are allowed t-shirt cap and all but you cannot accept lavish gifts or anything material from the object of research but in case of an additional compensation arrangement you are allowed to accept gift from a client subject to disclosure, subject to disclosure or written permission which one is in which one uh, one is with both are in additional compensation arrangement future performance. future performance and past performance see how it works say for example there is an investment management company so these people have a lot of clients they put in their money in the company this company has a lot of employees they have a lot of employees these employees are analyzing company 1 company 2 company 3 these are the companies which i am studying let's say mr ratan tata is one client mr premji is one client mr murthy is one client these people have put in money in your investment management company this is my employer i am the employee i am the guy who's doing the research and all that right i am going to decide whether to put their money in a snap deal or a flipkart or where to invest their money which private equity company to invest their money whether to put their money in uh, a big basket is coming in or a swiggy or what you know which private equity investment to do suppose right or you analyze shares you analyze whether i should apply in lnt whether i should put their money in lupin or whether in sipla or whether in sun pharma or whether in uh, i should put their money in an ongc or an hoec whatever so these people are your clients they put in your money in your company and your um, you need to research you need to analyze subject of investments and you need to prepare a report and you need to put their money in over there now agar aap in log aap in logo se aap paise loge if you are taking gifts from these people these people can gift can lure you your independence and objectivity is compromised because those who will give you more gifts you will invest in their companies more their share prices will go up that is kind of unethical it's your objectivity is lost you should be investing these people's money in those companies which are the best investment opportunity irrespective of whether these guys are giving you gifts or not giving you gifts so your independence and objectivity is compromised when you are taking collecting money or gifts from these guys therefore you cannot collect any gifts or anything from the objects of research absolutely correct right but when you talk about clients if you are doing a good if you are giving a very good performance if you are giving a very good performance you made a lot of money from their investments these clients might be happy and might want to encourage you to to perform better so in logo se agar gift le rahe ho to koi ethics mein problem to nahi hoga taking gifts from these guys is actually a boost it's it's a gift because of your performance it should not be a problem right but then why do you need a permission over here or a disclosure over here say for example over the last year you earned a 14% return and you were given a benchmark of 12% return these people were very happy with you because of your performance they gifted you a holiday a five day trip somewhere that's perfect but you need to give a disclosure to your employer you need to tell him ki i'm getting money from another place also you need to give a disclosure not a written permission second situation this guy tells you this client tells you you earned me 14% this time na agli baar you earned me 16% next year you earned me 16% and instead of a holiday in singapore i'll send you to vegas he promises you a better holiday basically he is promising you he is promising you a future compensation based on a future performance yahan par problem kya aayega why do you need a written permission over here because the employer might think that kyunki ye salary to ye de raha hai aapko he is giving you salary but the employer ko lagega employer is going to think that you know this guy is giving him extra holidays and stuff this guy is not going to listen to me he is going to be more uh, uh, biased and uh, loyal towards the client towards that particular client and the other clients might also have a problem ki ye to 
पैसा लगा के रखा है ही वेगस का हॉलीडेज एंड ऑल एंड दिस क्लाइंट विल बी ट्रीटेड इन अ मोर बेटर मैनर इसको कॉल करके हील गिव हिम ऑल दी स्टॉक आइडियाज एंड ऑल एंड दे लीव मी आउट सो यू नीड अ परमिशन फ्रॉम द क्लाइंट्स ऑल्सो एंड दी एम्प्लॉयर इफ यू वॉन्ट टू एक्सेप्ट अ फ्यूचर परफॉर्मेंस रिलेटेड एक्टिविटी यू गेटिंग द आइडिया नाउ दी अदर क्लाइंट्स माइट एक्चुअली बी हैप्पी ऑल्सो कि ही इज गोइंग टू वर्क हार्डर दिस एम्प्लॉय इज गोइंग टू वर्क हार्डर तो ऐसा तो हार्ड वर्क करेगा तो ही विल आइडेंटिफाई गुड स्टॉक्स इसके लिए गुड स्टॉक खरीदेगा मेरे लिए भी गुड स्टॉक खरीदेगा अच्छा लेट हिम कॉम्पनसेट लेट हिम गिव हिम मोर बोनस आई डोंट हैव टू गेट द गिव हिम मोर बोनस बट विद द सेम वर्क आई ऑल्सो गेट अ बेटर एनालिसिस डन राइट सो दी अदर क्लाइंट माइट बी हैप्पी माइट गिव द परमिशन माइट नॉट बी हैप्पी सो डू यू अंडरस्टैंड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द टू स्टैंडर्ड दी इंडिपेंडेंस एंड ऑब्जेक्टिविटी इज कमिंग फ्रॉम टेकिंग गिफ्ट फ्रॉम दीज पीपल एंड दी अडिशनल कॉम्पनसेशन अरेंजमेंट इज कमिंग फ्रॉम एक्सेप्टिंग मनी फ्रॉम दीज गाइज सो एब्सोल्यूटली करेक्ट सो दिस काइंड ऑफ एन अंडरस्टैंडिंग इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नो वॉट वी डन इज लेवल वन टू एंड थ्री का जितना भी प्रैक्टिस पेपर्स एग्जाम्पल्स बुक का एग्जाम्पल्स इंस्टीट्यूट का एग्जाम्पल्स दट ऑल कंपाइल्ड इन टू अ फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी पेज नोट सो यू बी एबल टू कवर फाइव हंड्रेड टू सेवन हंड्रेड एग्जाम्पल इन दट एटीन पेज शीट और फिफ्टीन पेज शीट वील गिव इट टू यू दैट डज नॉट मीन यू नॉट प्रैक्टिसिंग so you have to practice like say for example uh, remote location remote location pe accepting uh, uh, the helicopter ride to a remote location is allowed right so you have independence and objectivity standard violation there are 20 points not violation me there will be one point remote location helicopter ride acceptable so is tarike se hundreds and hundreds of examples have been categorized under each independence and objectivity violation me examples non violation me one one line ka examples so that way about 500 to 700 examples are covered you'll get that sheet right so that will be quite helpful but that is not a substitute of practice that is not a substitute of practice that is for your revision so that you guys perform well in ethics ethics is very important you need to perform well even in level 1 i keep on telling these guys that alternate investments and ethics is the most important area because alternate investments you cannot uh, afford to screw up too many questions you have four questions if you mark two incorrect you are on the uh, within the 50% uh, category so the number of errors you can make is very less in fra if you make 10 errors you are still 50% plus in a way if you see the number of questions you getting the idea so you need to understand you need to focus on that the institute does not tell you exactly how they are marking you and how they are passing or not passing you the general idea is 50% plus questions on an average you should be marking in all the subjects and on an average 70% plus questions should be right you need to be in the top 30% performers right but indian exams mein bhi yahi hota hai na agar aap ek subject mein fail kar rahe ho to aapko pass nahi karega you need to pass on the individual subject basis and aggregate basis so these guys must also have something of a very similar thing If you're getting into a below 50% category, you can be in the 45% level or a 5% level also. If you are in the 45% level, there's a probability you'll clear. If you are in the 5% level, you should not you do not, I mean, you should not be clearing. You're getting the idea. So you need to be doing very good in all the subjects. You need to be doing decently well in all the subjects, and aggregate me, you need to be performing uh, decently well. Well, this bit is okay. So ethics me. So this is the kind of understanding you'll be requiring when you're studying the subjects. Level one, ho gaya, ho gaya. But now level two me, you need to uh, be a little serious and you need to be very focused on the concepts. One more thing, I'll discuss the syllabus. But one more thing, when you're looking at uh, either business or a job, whatever you're looking at, post your CFA, post your CFA level two, level three. Obvious. Institute does not provide placement in India. There is no campus placement by the institute. You all know that. CF is a very good designation one of the most coveted as one of the most coveted designations in finance globally but when you're looking at a job when i go for a job interview i know the employer knows that i'm a ca i have cleared cfa level 3 that part he knows that i've cleared so i have a technical knowledge do you think he'll be asking me questions on the textbook no he'll be asking you questions with respect to politics economy and all that about the markets in general so if you're not well versed with what's happening in the economy it's not going to help you have to make sure that you guys are okay with you know you're following the news you have a decent background about the economics and pol uh, politics ka knowledge i personally take a little bit of initiative at least whatever i can i share books and all with the students finance books management books novels easy interesting novels and i encourage you guys to study a lot of pdfs and all i keep sharing i keep sending make sure you guys are reading rich dad poor dad kitna padha hai kitna padha hai kitna books padha hai तुम्हारा तुम्हारा यू तो रेड अ कपल ऑफ देम सो आई कीप ऑन शेयरिंग दीज आर्टिकल्स एंड ऑल दैट ग्रुप पे मेल पे जैसे भी 
you guys need to make sure you start reading because i cannot make you read i even planned a book reading session i told these guys that i'll take you out for a breakfast or a something we'll have a book reading session nobody bothered to read so wo incentive aapko khud se lena padega otherwise don't complain that i'm not getting a job chartered accountants get 5000 a month and 50000 a month and 5 lakh a month so then when you complain that the institute is not doing enough or this is a problem that is a problem the problem is you are not reading you cannot give a presentation i see so many chartered accountants or graduates or whatever it is uh, <coughs> Uh, uh those who have done cfa and all they cannot make a good ppt they cannot work on excel they cannot give a presentation they cannot stand for 10 minutes and give a presentation of course you're not going to be selected in the board or you'll not be escalated to a level because when you're escalated to a level when you're promoted to a level you need to be good with uh, you know you need to work work it out quick you need to have a very good speed on your excel on your ppt on all these things and you need to be able to talk your english needs to be good you ha- you have to have an immaculate command over the language right so those things you need to start developing l1 ke liye i've got something planned so those who are giving the exam in june those who've given in june those who are giving right now in december so the l2 batch and l3 batch also uh, i'll be giving out stocks i'll be having a kind of an equity competition so you'll have a stock sell side buy side you will be preparing a uh, equity research reports and all and we'll be having a proper face off kind of a thing so i'm plan- working on something december and we'll be doing that so participate it's, it's something great you'll learn a lot so you'll be doing real like you'll have a stock let's say a two member team has a sun pharma buy a two member team has a sun pharma sell and they'll have to debate with the whole crowd in front of them that why is it a buy or why is it a sell you have to defend your research report you need to create maybe a two pager or a three pager report you need to defend some designing that i'm planning that for my students at least i want you guys to do better so wo sara cheez dhyan mein rakhna khali padhai karne se bhi nahi hoga so do not just think that you are studying for the exam and you'll clear the exam and it's going to work out it's not it does not happen that way competition is severe lot of people taking the exams jobs are not that great in any sector i'm not talking about finance although india is going to be doing a lot of more stuff with finance reits are coming in private equity is a good thing in india right now hedge funds will be coming in lic housing finance bajaj finance punjab housing finance you're seeing so much of asset backed security mortgage backed security coming in lot of people take home loans nowadays people wouldn't take home loans earlier yes there was a crisis in the us so there was a lot of negatives over there so that does not mean that developing nations mein yahan par to wo cheez baad mein aata hai na jo pehle us mein aa chuka hai ab hedge funds aa raha hai aayega reit has come in private equity is a great uh, is is being pumped in every day day in and day out we are having nbfcs coming in so there's a lot of scope 2019 basel nam norms will be implemented lot of changes lot of stuff is happening in the financial political economic scenario in india and globally countries default kar rahe hain countries lad rahe hain uh, elections uh, itna scale pe ho raha hai mncs itna scale pe ja raha hai deutsche bank ko itna bada deep wo de diya fine dene ke liye lehman uh, went bankrupt matlab do you see so much of activities happening all around you ऑयल का प्राइस इज वन फोर्टी के ऊपर ट्वेंटी के नीचे एंड अगेन फिफ्टी सिक्सटी के आसपास यू सींग द अमाउंट ऑफ वॉलिटिलिटी दैट वेर इन द मार्केट द अमाउंट ऑफ दर इज लॉट ऑफ मोमेंटम दर इज लॉट ऑफ एक्शन दैट इज हैपनिंग दर सो मच हैपनिंग इन द इकोनॉमी इट्स द बेस्ट टाइम टू लर्न यू नो अबाउट द पॉलिटिक्स इंडिया का पोलिटिकल सीनेरियो देखो यूएस का देखो इतना हाइपर एक्टिव कभी भी लोग मार्केट रहा नहीं है people have become so reactive towards every single piece of news everybody is so connected everybody is trading with every other nation you buy a 100 rupees stuff you can order from china now ali express matlab 100 rupees ka saman 50 rupees ka saman tak you can get in india ordering from a different country so think the amount matlab just just imagine the amount of uh, integration globalization everything that's happening and along with that the downside and the risk because of that it's only the st- uh, fittest that can survive now because if flipkart is not going to give you a good deal you go to amazon if that's not going to give you a good deal bye bye i'll go to ali express you understanding the idea you bring out one app and one business becomes outdated aaj ke din koi business ka koi bharosa nahi hai koi job ka koi bharosa nahi hai because things are changing so quickly so you need to be prepared so what you need to do is not just this part this part is obviously there it will give you a credibility instead of starting with a 4 lakh job maybe you start with a 7 lakh job so that 5 years 7 years bach gaya na wo ladder climb karne mein and you have such a strong base of finance so obviously you climb also quicker you start with a bigger base and you climb more quickly but that is not going to happen if you do not combine this with reading your newspapers bit of novels and all every single blog tells you successful people read the top 3 things has to be reading bill gates read 140 something books 142 na 148 last year read somewhere Warren Buffett spends around 70% of his day reading. 
why do these people why does everybody have a newspaper in the hand in the morning so i'll tell you how to go about it news and shorts padhna shuru karo i see most of the people not reading you start with news and shorts then you start reading one page of the times business page i'm not asking you to read the whole of economic times i'll tell you which apps and all to subscribe go online finemize me apna email id dalo do chhota sa finance ya marketing ya management ya business related stories will be emailed to you on a daily basis it will take you hardly 2 minutes to read small two pieces of stories and be very interesting to read subscribe to finemize so i'll keep on giving you these kind of examples in the class that you can start doing but you have to take an initiative if you're not taking an initiative nothing will happen i am going to be spending my time and taking that initiative for that equity thing to work out because i want you guys to koshish to karo ek bar reuters.com money control kholo balance sheet to padho i see students never have have never seen a balance sheet how do you expect to get a research analyst ka job if you have never seen a balance sheet you're understanding what i'm telling you the books don't have the whole of balance sheet right in them a balance sheet itself a balance sheet annual report is going to have a 300 page content If you've never gone through a 300 page content how do you expect yourself to land up a job of research analyst you'll not qualify the interview round the degree will get you to the interview round but qualifying that interview round will require a lot right so anyways a lot of gyan is happening but wo sara cheez ko dhyan rakhna ha ha so wo sara cheez please dhyan rakhna ye sara cheez ke liye so abhi bolna is easier because abhi kar paoge march april mein obviously problem hoga us samay nahi kar paoge wo cheez you getting it right now you'll have the option you'll have the time to you know start reading and all that and get the habit going but march april ke time mein obviously you'll be delved into your textbooks so that time it will get more difficult and if you start it later it's going to be a problem the sooner the better the sooner you start with these things it's going to be better if you ignore this right now you'll suffer maybe a year later or two years later so it's your choice it's an added thing it's got nothing to do with the exam but uh, we'll try to do i'll personally i'll try to do as much as possible book reading session la 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 again send in all the books to the all the batches again and maybe i'll plan something in mid jan in mid jan you read a book we'll have like 50 people 100 people we'll have 50 people everybody's read one book and they just summarize the whole book in 5 minutes or 4 minutes seven effective habits of people so you just summarize the whole book in 3 4 minutes because that person has spent quite a few hours reading that whole 300 page book but then 4 4 minutes karke ek ghanta mein you have 15 books done So don't you think it will be quite useful that way? We'll have an idea about so many books together. So I want to have that session provided you guys read. Anyways, moving on to the syllabus. So ethics is this bit. You understand how you need to be very thorough with the content. The second one, the second study session of ethics will have a few case studies which you do not need to remember. They say exam the questions होता है ना? So suppose you have a few practice questions. You'll treat it like that. So ये company में these these problems happened. Which of the violations was there and how the violation could have been prevented? a couple of case studies just say exam a question nahi aayega you don't need to learn the case study it's just like another example right a similar case study can be provided then they can ask you which standard was violated how could it have, it have been prevented so you need to do it like a case study and there'll be one additional chapter research analyst so basically this guy acts like a research analyst so the, the same seven standards you'll have a lot of overlap with the seven standards another set of standards have been given for these research analysts in level 3 you will have another set of standards for an asset manager it's a very small chapter 70% of the standards will be overlapping with the first seven standards only isme na kuch kuch specify karega ki a research analyst is allowed to do this kind of trading we had not that firewalls and you're not allowed to trade on if say for example this analyst is commenting on these companies so he or his family immediate family is not allowed to trade on that so what are the best practices for research analyst just a few pages content with respect to this research analyst is going to be there that is in your second study session it takes hardly half an hour 40 minutes it's a very small very easy content but the seven standards you have to be thorough because again the weightage of ethics is going to be somewhere around uh, 10% to 15% just a second i'll just open the weightage page it's either in the first book or the last book anyways the exact weightages have been given i cannot find the weightage anyways the weightage has, has been given it's about 10% or something 10 to 15% or something so you'll have about 60 60 questions you have 20 mc 20 mcqs 10% would be two item set so you'll have about 12 questions coming in from ethics but out of 12 questions generally about eight or nine has to be from the first seven standards 
eight, nine, or maybe ten. Maybe a couple of questions, two or three maximum questions should be coming in from the research objectivity standard. Research objectivity. Objective okay, that your second standard na independence and objectivity. So that standard is that that designation is dealt in much more detailed in this standard. Clear? Simple. The third study session you moved to quants. Level one, the quants was quite exhaustive, quite extensive, not exhaustive, quite extensive. You had the time value of money, annuity, probability, statistics. You were doing a lot of calculations. You were understanding a lot of financial mathematics. The next half went into the hypothesis section, which generally people find a little difficult. When you talk about level two quants, you have only three or four chapters. You have just four chapters. One chapter has been added from the last term, from 2016. It's simple. There's a little bit of overlap. We already understand what is correlation and what is covariance that part is okay in the level two quants the first chapter is going to be de dealing with the correlation covariance it's quite a bit of overlap with the level one part the second chapter we discuss regression so basically if i have a y is equal to b0 plus b1x say for example i have a data set let's say mere paas 250 trading days in a year let's assume a 250 day trading days in a year 52 weekends 104 days out and let's say 10-15 holidays are going to be out. So you have approximately 250 days in a year. 250 days ka you have the SBI ka stock prices and you have the interest rate. Obviously we know that the SBI stock price will be depending on the interest rate. If interest rate goes up and down, SBI prices will also go up and down. So let's say I want to predict SBI prices. So SBI stock price is equal to something plus something into interest rate. So based on the macroeconomic models, based on what the RBI is doing, I can project a interest rate badega ki girega. Accordingly, I should be able to project what will be the SBI ka price in future. So forming equations, finding out the dependency, finding equations, linear regression. If you have done level one properly, linear regression appeared in your characteristic line portfolio. Portfolio mein apne kya karte the? Portfolio mein used to have the market return and the stock return. And you used to have these points, used to form an equation. Iska slope used to be beta. That is characteristic line for you. That used to be beta, that per unit change in stock return with respect to a change in the market return. For one unit market return change hoga, mera stock kitna change hoga. That is what beta tells you, sensitivity of the stock with respect to the market. Right? So this is regression. When you collate, when you put together two variables, x-axis and y-axis, you try to form an equation between them, you try to form a, a relationship between them, that is regression. Regression is going to be there in your quants. And you can have a simple regression or you can have multiple regression. SBI stock price can be depending on interest rate, inflation rate, unemployment rate, GDP growth rate, foreign exchange rate, current account deficit. A lot of macroeconomic factors could be determining SBI ka stock price movement. So we will try and understand this equation. That is in your quants part. The third chapter of your quants talks about the time series analysis. Now say for example, if instead of this equation I tell you, my today's value is equal to B0 something plus something into yesterday's value. So basically over time, how will the value change? So you are kind of auto-regressing the variable, auto-regressing, self-regressing, apne upar regressing. So I am trying to find out my future value based on my past value. You are trying to find out trends ki over time how will the variable move. Then you have certain variables which can be trending this way. There could be certain variable which could be trending this way. So when a variable is trending this way, agar yaha value hai, next value should be lower. Agar value average ke niche hai, next value should be upar. Mean reverting model. The data is always reverting towards the mean, towards the average. If you're not understanding, it's okay. I'm just introducing you. Like, like you know, these are the kind of stuff that we're going to be studying. Because eventually, you want to find out na, that, okay, RM, uh, RE is equal to RF min plus RM minus RF beta. Say, for example, I want to find out the relation that this stock ka return is equal to or this portfolio ka return is equal to something plus something into risk factor 1 plus something into risk factor 2. If you remember, there was a pharma French model you've done in level 1 that my stock ka return, required return is RF risk-free rate plus small minus big into the risk uh, into beta, high PB ratio minus low PB ratio into uska beta, momentum factor, size factor, <coughs> value stock, growth stock, all those things you've done in level one. You've done, you've built a base, you've understood the terms and all. Now we will try and get the equations for those. So that has to be done using regression and all. 
when you want to find out when you want to forecast data based on its past data that is forecasting projecting that is going to be covered in your time series regression so you start with correlation covariance because you have to understand the relation between the data then form the equation linear regression then time series the relation of data with its own variable in the past I have not covered a few terms heteroscedasticity multicollinearity and all will be there so thoda complicated hai quants is uh, little difficult but in the past batches have seen after the quants part is done people find it very easy so dekh kar ke lagega but once your classes are done you'll be you'll be finding it very comfortable theek hai and ek naya chapter add kiya hai bahut easy sa hai probabilistic models and deterministic models and all basically wo decision tree wagaira nahi hota hai एंड प्रॉबिलिटी को यूज करके एक बहुत ही सिंपल सा लेस न्यूमेरिकल थियोरी सा छोटा सा चैप्टर ऐड किया है एंड नॉट डिस्कस मच सो दैट योर प्रॉबिलिटी डिसीजन ट्री सेंसिटिविटी उस टाइप का एक एनालिसिस रिलेटेड रिलेटिवली लेस न्यूमेरिकल वेरी स्मॉल सिंपल इजी चैप्टर हैज बीन एडेड सो दैट इज योर क्वांस दैट्स ऑल दैट्स देयर इन क्वांस सो इट्स नॉट एज एक्सटेंसिव एज लेवल 1 कंटेंट आर वी गुड टिल हियर the next study session is economics economics is again not extensive a lot of people used to find economics very irritating in level 1 since you have already done it in level 11 and 12 and graduation level there is no micro macro and all that in that manner uh, economics ka the major content the first part is based on your forex if you remember international trade mein you did a formula forward is equal to spot into 1 plus ia by 1 plus ib hold the party i don't know if you remember if you if you understood the formula back then I just roughly tell you how was the formula derived. I will be deriving most of the formulas because इतना सारा formulas है exam में confusion होगा ना कि इसमें plus था कि minus था. But if you've understood the formula well, you'll not have a problem in deriving or in in you know uh, recollecting that during the exam. So most of the formula I will be explaining. It's not possible to just mug up everything and go for the exam. Then it does not make sense for you guys to come over here. it does not make sense for you guys to spend your time invest your time with me it need not be a waste of time it needs to be an investment of time right so formulas वगैरह थोड़ा derive करेंगे logic देखेंगे हर चीज के पीछे that is how you crack the exam you just want to mug up and go and crack the exam it does not happen with cfa <coughs> you're getting it say for example forward price ka matlab kya tha ki to over here i want to give 1 dollar and uh, or i want to buy 1 dollar let's say i will contract today i want to buy 1 dollar I want to give X amount of rupees over here. That is a forward contract. I will contract today. I will decide today that मेरे को एक dollar देना है and उसके बदले एक dollar चाहिए मेरे को उसके बदले में how much rupees <coughs> do I need to pay? But you decide the amount of rupees today. How do you get that answer? How do you get that value? You did that formula forward into one plus i a one plus i b. That's the formula you apply and you get the answer. But what's the logic of the answer? It's very simple. Say for example, the dollar interest rate is equal to three percent. The rupee interest rate is equal to eight percent. Let us do a simple logic. If I need one dollar at six months, if I invest one dollar ka present value in the bank today, won't I have one dollar at six months? So I will have to invest how much today? One by one point zero three to the power six by twelve. If this much dollar I invest today, I will have one dollar in my pocket at the end of one year. इतना डॉलर बाय करने के लिए हाउ मच रुपीज इज रिक्वायर्ड लेट से द स्पॉट रेट इज इक्वल टू सिक्सटी सिक्स रुपीज पर डॉलर वन डॉलर का प्राइस सिक्सटी सिक्स रुपीज इतना डॉलर का प्राइस कितना इन टू सिक्सटी सिक्स रुपीज यूनिटरी मेथड अच्छा नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड ऑल विच वी हैव डन इन लेवल वन दट ऑल डन थ्रू यूनिटरी मेथड हाफ द फॉर्मुलाज एल डू यूनिटरी मेथड ओनली हाफ द फॉर्मुलाज तो यूनिटरी मेथड से हो जाएगा क्लास एट का सो जो बी दैट इजी सो दिस आई नीड सिक्सटी सिक्स रुपीज One dollar sixty-six rupees. Itna dollar sixty-six rupees. And even otherwise, if you see, the units also cancel. The units also cancel. You do a speed is equal to distance by time. It's kilometer by hour. You do a this time into speed. Five hours, sixty kilometer per hour. Kilometer per hour, hour will cancel. You'll be left with kilometer. Speed is equal. Uh, distance is equal to speed into time. Kilometer per hour into R, R and R cutega. You're getting it. The units always cancel. The currency is always cancel. You'll need it because ye currency arbitrage and all will be there in economics. So we'll see. Anyways, so 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 anyways, so
आई नीड वन डॉलर आफ्टर सिक्स मंथ्स आई नीड टू डिपॉजिट इतना डॉलर टुडे इतना डॉलर आज डिपॉजिट करने के लिए आई नीड इतना रुपीज टुडे इतना रुपीज इफ आई टेक अ लोन फ्रॉम द बैंक टुडे हाउ मच डू आई नीड टू गिव द बैंक बाद में इन टू वन पॉइंट जीरो एट टू द पार्ट सिक्स बाई ट्वेल्व इफ आई टेक दिस मच रुपीज का लोन टुडे आई नीड टू गिव इतना टू द बैंक ना स्पॉट इन टू वन प्लस आई ए बाई वन प्लस आई बी होल्ड द पार्टी आ गया फॉर्मूला देखो स्पॉट रेट इन टू वन प्लस आई ए बाई वन प्लस आई बी होल्ड द पार्टी सो वी ऑलरेडी डिराइव इन इकोनॉमिक्स इन लेवल वन दिस वे यू नीड टू स्टडी दिस इज हाउ यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड यू नीड टू ग्रास थिंग्स सो ये सब अंडरस्टैंडिंग थारो रखना पड़ेगा यू गेटिंग इट सो ये वाला फॉर्मूला ये जो फॉरन करेंसी रिलेटेड इकोनॉमिक्स में वन बिग चैप्टर इज देर आई आर पी इंटरेस्ट रेट पैरिटी परचेजिंग पा पैरिटी सो करेंसी रिलेटेड बैलेंस ऑफ ट्रेड रिलेटेड बिकॉज लॉट ऑफ इंटरनेशनल इकोनॉमिक्स इज हैपनिंग सो वन चैप्टर इज गोइंग टू बी फोकस ऑन फोकसिंग ऑन समथिंग रिलेटेड टू दिस से फॉर एग्जाम्पल देर आर थ्री बैंक एक बैंक में रूपी डॉलर रेट है दूसरा बैंक में डॉलर पाउंड रेट है तीसरा बैंक में रूपी पाउंड रेट है इज इट अ पॉसिबिलिटी कि आई बैंक आई बाय रूपी फ्रॉम वन बैंक देन आई गिव गेट डॉलर सपोज आई गिव डॉलर गेट रूपी I give rupee, I get pound. I again give pound, I get dollar. Can I make an arbitrage gain? Three banks are, three currency. Hai. It's possible. Hona nahi chahiye. It's possible that you can make an arbitrage if there is a incorrect pricing in the banks. So we'll see all those things. So that kind of content we'll do. The second chapter, if you remember, your output was a function of capital and labor. Then you did that total labor productivity and all those things. so we will try to do we will try to find out the gdp growth rate ki agar ek economy mein capital growth itna hoga ya i add this much capital i add this much labor what is going to be my gdp growth rate because eventually what will happen nobody earns super normal profits every industry is going to be earning normal profits eventually if every industry is going to be earning normal profits eventually the formula you use d1 by re minus g the g is not short term growth rate it is always a long term growth rate because you assume that the company is going to be earning this growth rate until infinity to jo long term growth rate hoga to agar super normal profits is not allowed iska matlab equity ka long term growth rate should be gdp ka long term growth rate equity ka long term growth rate should be gdp ka long term growth rate so first 5 years i can earn a 15% growth rate नेक्स्ट फाइव इयर्स आई लर्न टेन परसेंट ग्रोथ रेट बस उसके बाद में तो सिक्स परसेंट ग्रोथ रेट होगा थ्रू आउट वेन माई प्रोडक्ट साइकिल विल ब्रिंग मी टू अ मच्योरिटी लेवल ग्रोथ स्टेज इंट्रोडक्शन ग्रोथ मच्योरिटी शेक आउट राइट सो वो सब के लिए डोंट यू सी आई नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट विल बी द जी डी पी ग्रोथ रेट इन ऑर्डर टू फाइंड आउट इक्विटी वैल्यूएशन सो उससे रिलेटेड देर इज वन चैप्टर इन इकोनॉमिक्स वे यू ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द जी डी पी ग्रोथ रेट बिकॉज दैट इज गोइंग टू बी रिक्वायर्ड इन इक्विटी वैल्यूएशन so i will be connecting two chapters you need to have this kind of an understanding right to wo sara cheez karenge to ab ye book mein formula dekh loge acha theek hai growth rate hai gdp ka growth rate will be used as equity but why will it be used as equity you need to understand kyunki long term mein company cannot earn super normal growth rate people will enter the industry snatch away their extra profit so long term mein the industry or the company is going to grow at the industry rate or the gdp rate at the economic rate therefore the long term growth rate of the economy will be as good as the gdp growth rate so that is what i use in this d1 by re minus g you getting it so those things we will connect with the economics part and ek aur chhota sa bekar sa chapter hai economic regulation that's a two three page four page uh, theory chapter that we'll discuss oh bekar sa matlab that's that's quite a easy bit bolo got this idea so this is your this is your first book that completes with the fourth study session the next uh, the next book we'll start with fra the fifth study session has been deleted the long uh, the inventory you had in level 1 and the long lived asset and a little bit of liability that you had in level 1 was repeated in level 2 there was one study session with the inventory chapter and the asset long lived asset chapter goodwill amortization impairment and all that that has been deleted so the fifth study session jo purana material ka if you see 2016 ka that has been chucked out that is deleted for you you don't have to study so that's one study session left you have 17 study sessions instead of 18 now correct the next study session fra fra what you'll have is you'll have intercorporate so i'll just
so you have two study sessions for fra the first study session has got three not a voluminous chapter but all the three chapters are relatively on the difficult side the first is the holding subsidiary intercorporate one company investing in another company so how do you create those consolidated statements and all so those who are doing chartered accountancy ca final ca final is a one month topic for your holding subsidiary we always we will have a one class or a one and a half class topic for this obviously the content has not been covered in that much detail but as an analyst if you find an itc's consolidated statement you need to be able to understand that we are not the ones who prepare financial reports we are the ones who analyze and understand financial reports am i correct so in that situation in that situation the intercorporate investments and all is about holding subsidiary associate company joint ventures so how do you look at the consolidation how do you look at the balance sheets and all in uh, totality so that is what we study in the first part afs and all isme aayega that uh, pufe you had income regular income other co comprehensive income other comprehensive income has pufe p is the pension uh, p is the pension adjustment u is the unrealized gain from efs securities f is the foreign currency translation adjustment and e was the effective portion of cash flow hedges the pufe ka u wala part is going to be over here unrealized gains from efs security the p wala part pension goes over here and the uh, forex adjustment forex translation goes in the mnc part so the pension part is supposedly everybody says that it's the most difficult chapter but trust me it's going to be quite easy it's going to be quite easy once you understand you have to be thoda sar dukhega class ke baad thoda sa attention zyada dena padega it's a little heavy side pe define contribution plan define benefit plan railways you retire until you're dead i'll give you 2000 bucks mnc kya karta hai aapka salary ka 10% aapko de deta hai uske baad mein mnc ka has got no responsibility towards you your fund is uh, doing well your fund is doing your fund is uh, liquidated it doesn't bother him i am working at an xyz company company ne kya kiya 10% of my salary apna pocket se mere pf mein dal diya ab wo pf acha karega kharab karega koi matlab nahi hai that is a pf ka problem and my problem the company has got nothing to do with it but when i am working at a railway say for example the railway has promised that after i retire they are going to be paying me an amount of money so uska liability ka calculation and lot of calculation lot of work all the work related to pension is going to be in this chapter so there is going to be a lot of uh, service cost interest cost all those things it's quite a difficult chapter and not get into details right now that is what we do over here thoda difficult logo ko lagta hai mnc is basically suppose i have a company which i hold abroad i have a subsidiary abroad so when i do the consolidated statement mere paas ek land hai tata has got jaguar over here it bought jaguar it purchased jaguar in 2008 ke time par so 2008 ka pound rupee exchange rate pe wo land ko convert karega ki aaj ke rate pe convert karega जो लाइबिलिटीज है एसेट्स है विच फॉरन करेंसी रेट विल यूज अ हंड्रेड रुपी पर पाउंड विच वॉज देयर एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम और नाइनटी रुपी पर पाउंड राइट नाउ आपका तो टेन परसेंट का वैल्यूएशन में चेंज आ जाएगा कितना प्रॉफिट लॉस आ जाएगा सोचो द अमाउंट ऑफ प्रॉफिट लॉस दैट यू एंड अप रिकॉग्नाइजिंग और नॉट रिकॉग्नाइजिंग बिकॉज ऑफ अ करेंसी चेंज इज गोइंग टू बी ह्यूज पूरा का पूरा जैगवार का कंपनी में टेन परसेंट का वैल्यू में आपका चेंज आ सकता है इन द टाटा मोटर्स बैलेंस शीट so as an analyst what adjustments we need to do how do we recognize what part goes into the foreign currency translation adjustment account those kind of things we cover in the mnc wala portion if there's a hyperinflation in the economy i have invested in zimbabwe zimbabwe had hyperinflation one apple was costing 1 million or 1 billion zimbabwe dollars or zimbabwe currency hyperinflation unka currency ka value nahi raha you getting it so us situation mein how do you account for that so hyper inflationary environment was so when you have cross borders foreign currency translation that is why the foreign currency translation profit or loss that portion is going to turn up in the mnc section right and the next part fra is very easy jaise aap log ka level 1 mein last study session tha na waisa hi hai thoda sa usse to thoda complicated rahega but you know whether the financial reporting ka quality is good or bad a couple of examples are there it's a very easy content very theoretical very easy content you'll use a couple of model or maybe a couple of formulas to find out uh, whether the balance sheet is good or whether the balance sheet is bad whether the income quality so i'll see uh, with some measure i'll try to find out how much is the accrual con content and how much is the cash content of the net profit suppose i generated 20000 profit i'll try to find out what percentage of the net profit is accrual basis pe and what percentage is cash basis pe using some formula accruals ratio debtors creditors and all will give you an idea of the accrual wala part right so wo sab ko use karke i'll try to find out whether the quality of financial reports is good or bad it's a very easy part bahut easy hai do chhota chapters hai it'll not even take a single class for the two chapters itna easy hai that's that 
next we come to the corporate finance part which has two study sessions so corporate finance first one is your cap budge you have capital structure and dividend डिविडेंड में थोड़ा सा फोकस टैक्सेशन वगैरह पे होगा अदरवाइज यू ऑलरेडी डन डिविडेंड इन लेवल वन यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट कैपिटल बजटिंग इज अगेन गोइंग टू बी मोर कॉम्प्लिकेटेड जस्ट द कैपिटल बजटिंग डिसीजन इसमें इन्वेस्ट करूं नहीं करूं एनपीवी आई आर आर पे बैक एंड ऑल यू ऑलरेडी अंडरस्टैंड विल डू अल क्विक रिविजन एंड देर आर डिफरेंट अप्रोचेज विच यूल यूज नाउ से फॉर एग्जाम्पल अभी तक कैपिटल बजटिंग में ऑल यू डिड वॉज कि अच्छा एनपीवी इसका हायर है तो ये बेटर है इसका हायर है तो ये बेटर है नाउ से फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई गिव यू टू ऑप्शन देर इज एन ए सी वो ए सी खराब हो गया है abhi if you replace the ac with a new one you have to spend 30000 bucks and you will be able to use it for 10 years but if you change it with an old ac isko repair kara loge to khali 5000 ka kharcha padega but you can use it for 3 years and electricity bill may be there will be a difference so 3 years and 10 years an equal life ho gaya how do you do a capital budgeting decision over here so a little complicated you'll have a few methods residual approach and net income approach and all that you'll do in capital budgeting capital structure is what proportion of your capital should be debt equity your d ratio वगैरह अलग अलग theories है मोदी ग्लानी मिलर एंड ऑल विल स्टडी इजी चैप्टर डिसेंट चैप्टर डिसेंट कंटेंट वेरी न्यूमेरिकल वेरी वेरी गुड कंटेंट लेवल टू हैव एंड द रिविजंस दे हैव मेड आई एम वेरी हैप्पी विद द रिविजंस l1 का कपल ऑफ रिविजंस आई डिड नॉट पर्सनली लाइक इट अ लॉट बट लेवल 2 का रिविजंस दैट दे हैव डन इज प्रीटी गुड दे दे हैव मेड अ गुड अमाउंट ऑफ रिविजंस कैपिटल स्ट्रक्चर इज गोइंग टू बी विद रिस्पेक्ट टू थियोरीज की कितना डेट होना चाहिए कितना इक्विटी होगा अभी डेट होगा तो यू हैव टू कंसिडर द टैक्सेशन बिट बिकॉज डेट के ऊपर इंटरेस्ट के ऊपर यू गेट टैक्सेशन सेविंग इंटरेस्ट टैक्स सेविंग होता है ना सो दो थिंग्स वी लुक एट दैट एंड इन द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ द कॉपरेट फाइनेंस इज गोइंग टू बी लिटल अनोइंग पोर्शन फॉर यू यू हैव टू थियोरी चैप्टर्स विद रिस्पेक्ट टू कॉपरेट गवर्नेंस काइंड ऑफ स्टाफ एंड अन अदर वन इज ऑल्सो रिलेटेड कॉपरेट परफॉर्मेंस एंड गवर्नेंस एंड ऑल दैट and third one is mergers and acquisitions which is interesting two chapters corporate governance you already done it will be a little repetitive the second one is again stakeholder approach and a little bit of easy theory easy theory it's four five page content it's easy right so that is okay and mergers and acquisition mein kafi sara valuation merger hoga to kaise hoga run back fee and sun pharma merge to sun pharma agar shares dega run back fee ko to shares dene ke baad dilution will happen what will be the share price of sun pharma after the merger has happened If they are combining together, what is the synergy? Why would they combine? Sun Pharma ka value is thousand crores. Run back fee ka is five hundred crores. After the merger, Sun Pharma ka valuation will be seventeen hundred crores. The two hundred crores extra is because of the cost saving and all they'll happen because they are merging together. One CEO, one salary, one CFO ka one salary. Lot of savings, manufacturing me savings. Lot of cost cutting and all will happen. You understanding the idea? So that kind of content will be M and A. and you have done a little bit of takeover defenses poison pill and uh, golden parachute and all that wo thoda waisa aur bhi defenses and all thoda detail mein rahega interesting very interesting part ye do chapters thoda sa annoying but again questions do come we'll do it theek hai this portion this completes your book 2 this completes your book 2 corporate finance is interesting book 3 is totally equity based book 3 is totally equity based Eleven. You will have uh, the first part. The first study session of equity has got two very small, simple chapters. Return concept may holding period return. Uh, uh, they've used a couple of more uh, Pastor model, Stamberg model, a couple of models to find out different different varieties of returns. Now, one variety of return I can say. Suppose the stock ka beta. Suppose I'm calculating RE. ठीक है आर एफ प्लस आर एम माइनस आर एफ बीटा द बीटा ऑफ द स्टॉक राइट नाउ इज 1.4 एवरेज बीटा अब कंपनी का भी तो बिजनेस साइकिल होता है अभी कंपनी का अगर कंपनी ज्यादा रिस्की होगा तो डोंट यू थिंक द कंपनी विल ट्राई टू रिड्यूस इट्स रिस्क अगर कंपनी का रिस्क कम हो जाएगा तो कंपनी विल ट्राई टू इंक्रीज इट्स रिस्क दिल ट्राई टू मेंटेन एट एन एवरेज बीटा ऑफ लेट्स वन पॉइंट सिक्स सो इफ माई करेंट बीटा इज वन पॉइंट फोर डोंट यू थिंक आई शुड एडजस्ट माई बीटा फॉर द नेक्स्ट ईयर टू लेट्स वन पॉइंट फोर फाइव धीरे धीरे करके आई मेक इट वन पॉइंट सिक्स If my beta is 1.7, I should predict that my next beta should be let's say 1.68, because I will try and reduce the beta. So maybe a little bit of beta adjustment should be done. So इस तरीके से ना बहुत सारा concept रहेगा wherein different returns and all can be calculated. That is what we start off with in equity. The second study session of equity, they 
struck off two chapters which was the most annoying part so that's a good deal for you michael porter ka five forces ke upar mein an ek aur theory chapter tha that has been cut off you have an industry analysis ka chapter you've got a ddm ka chapter तो वो जो D1 वन बाय आर ई माइनस जी का फॉर्मुला था ना उसका बहुत सारा वराइटीज किया हुआ है वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वेरी न्यूमेरिकल एंड वेरी इजी आई जनरली स्टार्ट विद द डिवरेंट का चैप्टर ओनली आई स्टार्ट विद द सेकंड हाफ ऑफ इक्विटी आई स्टार्ट इसके बीच में देन आई डू दिस देन आई कम टू द फर्स्ट पार्ट इट्स ईजियर फॉर यू टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट वे सो आई गो इन दैट ऑर्डर वेन आई डू इक्विटी सो यू हैव दी इंडस्ट्री यू हैव दी डी डी एम मॉडल एंड इंडस्ट्री वैल्यूएशन इन द सेकंड स्टडी सेशन फर्स्ट में रिटर्न इन ऑल एक दो छोटा चैप्टर है सेकेंड में डी इज द मेजर पार्ट third way you have that free cash flow fcf as fcfe approach one chapter on that relative valuation karte the na pcf pb ps p ratios and all ko use karke finding out the value of the company ev ebitda approach and all so we do that part in the uh, in the relative valuation chapter so in the in the level 1 you had ddm approach fcff approach residual valuation approach we have three different chapters for all the three components in your level 2 ठीक है वो तीन अप्रोच था आपका एक चैप्टर में नाउ वी हैव अ डिफरेंट चैप्टर फॉर इच देर इज अनदर रेसिडियल वैल्यूएशन अप्रोच दैट्स अनदर वन मेथड ऑफ डूइंग योर रेसिडियल वैल्यूएशन एंड ऑल एक और तरीका होता है लाइक आई एल गिव यू आई एल गिव यू एन एग्जांपल सपोज माय रिक्वायर्ड रेट ऑफ रिटर्न इज आर ई ऑन योर योर आर ई इज इक्वल टू एटीन कंपनी जो एटीन अर्न करेगा माई रिक्वायर्ड रेट ऑफ रिटर्न इज एटीन सो वैल्यू ऑफ द टूडेज वैल्यू ऑफ द कंपनी शुड बी बेस्ड ऑन एटीन के हिसाब से डिस्काउंटेड वैल्यू If the company will earn more than 18%, then its value should be more. So we take that residual income. We'll calculate that 18% of the upper income is how much income is. PV etc. We'll take. We'll do some complicated stuff and we'll get the residual income valuation. And there is a private company valuation. So when you are valuing, let's say a TCS or an Infosys ka valuation, that is okay. If suppose I TCS ko nahi value karke, I am valuing a private company over here, whose shares market mein trade nahi hota hai. अब वो प्राइवेट कंपनी का जब आप वैल्यूएशन करोगे तो डोंट यू थिंक एक पब्लिक कंपनी से डिफरेंट होना चाहिए व्हेन यू आर वैल्यूइंग लेट्स से लिस्टेड कंपनी व्हिच इज देयर ऑन दी स्टॉक एक्सचेंज एक दूसरा कंपनी का वैल्यू थोड़ा डिफरेंट होना चाहिए द प्राइवेट कंपनी वैल्यूएशन शुड बी अ लिटिल हायर बिकॉज यू कैन कंट्रोल दैट कंपनी यूल बी बाइंग अ कंट्रोलिंग थर्टी फोर्टी फिफ्टी परसेंट स्टेक बट दैट प्राइवेट कंपनी का लिक्विडिटी या मार्केटेबिलिटी विल बी लोअर यू कैनॉट इजिली सेल तो उसके कारण इट शुड बी अ लिटिल लोअर तो वो एडजस्टमेंट्स करके प्राइवेट कंपनी का वैल्यूएशन कैसे करते हैं दैट वी डू इन द लास्ट चैप्टर ऑफ इक्विटी इन द लास्ट स्टडी सेशन राइट दैट इज द इक्विटी कंटेंट फॉर यू बोलो क्लियर इक्विटी हैज गॉट वन फुल बुक इक्विटी इज अ मेजर कंपोनेंट इन योर लेवल टू पोर्टफोलियो इज अ मेजर कंपोनेंट इन योर लेवल थ्री दिस ओके सिंपल इक्विटी सिंपल देन देर हैज बिन अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ शफलिंग इन द लास्ट टू बुक्स स्टडी सेशन ऊपर नीचे की और कुछ नहीं किया है राइट then you'll have your fixed income portion that's your 12 and 13 you have your fixed income in the fourth book just a moment and you have your derivatives over here fixed income mein kuch khas change nahi hua hai fixed income again you understand spot rates volatility rates and all that that is going to be there option embedded bonds ka valuation aayega so of course we are going with the forward rate spot rate yield spread and all that we are just going to scale up so all that you've learned in level 1 is going to be useful in your level 2 and uske alawa option embedded callable bond puttable bond and all those things and uh, you know asset backed security wagaira wo sab ke upar mein thoda sa content aayega ek chapter will be there on credit valuation models credit valuation model matlab uh, say for example uh, we want to find out ki is bond ko kya rating de what is the credibility of the bond whether that bond is going to default or it's not going to default right so we want to try you we will use the wasi sec model or the holy model and there will be a few models little irritating and a complicated chapter but uh, calculations nahi hai theoretically you'll have to do that so credit analysis related ek part hai so there is one part which is with respect to the valuation of securities option adjusted spreads and all that part oas ka calculation hai forward spot rates and all that the valuation part which you are already done in level 1 usko thoda sa aur detail mein jayenge option embedded bonds and all ke liye dekhenge credit analysis will be another portion and one chapter derivative se nikal kar ke fixed income mein dal diya hai 
credit default swap you just did the term and you just did a two uh, two paragraph content on that in level 1 credit default swap credit default swap is like buying an insurance right uh, say for example there is a cds buyer there is a cds seller i'll do it in detail cds buyer kya karta hai na wo bolta hai ki acha i'll give you an insurance premium let's say 5% main aapko every year dunga agar ye bond default kiya you pay me the pura ka pura amount you pay me pura ka pura losses ka amount it's like buying an insurance you give an insurance premium and if there is a loss event if there is a fire you'll get the money तो यहां पर आप इंश्योरेंस का प्रीमियम दे रहे हो एंड अगर बॉन्ड डिफॉल्ट करेगा तो वो लॉसेस के लिए आपको कॉम्पेंसेशन मिलेगा दैट वाज अ बेसिक आइडिया ऑफ सीडीएस इट डजेंट मैटर इफ यू डू नॉट रिमेंबर इट फ्रॉम लेवल वन बिकॉज लेवल वन हैड अ जस्ट अ पैराग्राफ ऑन दैट विल डू अ सीडीएस का चैप्टर पहले डेरेवेटिव में था अभी निकाल करके उसको फिक्स इनकम में डाल दिया है राइट right? डेरेवेटिव में पूरा का पूरा कंटेंट हैज बीन शफल्ड अप एंड रीअरेंज डेरेवेटिव में फॉरवर्ड फ्यूचर्स I'm comparing it to the previous level two syllabus as compared to the new level two syllabus. So, यहाँ पर derivatives में you have the same forward future का valuation. Earlier you had forward का future का अलग अलग chapter. You had the forward chapter, future chapter, swap chapter, option का दो chapter. Now forward future swap is in one chapter, a bigger one obviously. The second one is going to deal with options. The third one they've added a little bit of content of level three. ऑप्शन स्ट्रैटेजीज सो स्ट्रैटेजीज यूजिंग डेरिवेटिव हेजिंग कैसे करोगे डेरिवेटिव को यूज करके दैट हैज बीन एडेड वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग कंटेंट वेरी गुड स्टफ सो द वे देव री अरेज और द री अरेज तो बेकार किया है बट वट एवर एडिशनल स्टफ दैट देव एडेड द मॉडिफिकेशन दैट देव डन टू द डेरेवेटिव कंटेंट इज प्रिटी नाइस सो दैट वे इट्स नाइस इट्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक्स यू हैव दैट्स गोइंग टू बी योर डेरेवेटिव फोर्टीन That completes your book four. So forward future का you had done mainly pay off कैसे निकलता है, forward future क्या होता है, options, option का pay off and all. Now you'll do how to value the option. C zero is equal to forty or fifty. How do you calculate that? IV, IV तो पता है. TV कैसे calculate करेंगे? Intrinsic value you know that's the pay off, right? But how do you calculate the time value? If there is a swap, V two enter into a swap. In in a ten year swap, after two years, if I want to exit the swap, who's going to pay how much? That you calculate value of swap. Forward futures, forward futures. Ka I know that the level one content thoda sa garbar kar diya tha. The second chapter especially, I don't know if you guys remember the second chapter jahan forward future ka pricing ka pura theory dal diya tha. So I had to give pura ka pura notes to these uh, to everybody because book se samajh mein nahi aa raha tha. So now uska sum jayega yahan pe. Like this uh, currency wala bhi karaya na forward is equal to F. S0 into one plus IA by one plus IB. That is actually a forward rate calculation. Forward is equal to spot plus interest plus storage minus convenience. Usko lekar ke pura chapter ho jayega with just that concept. Even when you were looking at that 66 into 1.08 by 1.03, 66 is spot, 1.08 is plus interest, and 1.03 jo divide kiya na that was minus benefit. So I'll show you how it works. We'll just do one formula and that will cover the whole of forwards and futures, and I'll derive everything. कि स्वॉप रेट है सपोज स्वॉप रेट है तो स्वॉप क्या होता है कि आई गिव यू लेट्स से 7.8 परसेंट यू गिव मी लिबर रेट एंड वील डू इट फॉर 10 इयर्स हाउ डू यू कैलकुलेट दैट 7.8 परसेंट दैट इज द प्राइसिंग ऑफ द स्वॉप दैट वील कवर इन डेरिवेटिव्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वेरी इजी स्टफ बट वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग स्टफ एंड ऑप्शन एंड ऑल का कैलकुलेशन दैट कंप्लीट्स योर बुक फॉर एंड इन द फिफ्थ वन इन द फिफ्थ बुक यू आर लेफ्ट विथ पोर्टफोलियो एंड ऑल्टरनेट इन्वेस्टमेंट फिफ्टीन इज गोइंग टू बी ऑल्टरनेट इन्वेस्टमेंट And 16 and uh, 17 is going to be portfolio. Portfolio में there are two new chapters that have been added. Anyways, 2016 इन लोगों ने change किया था portfolio का content काफी change किया था 2016 में. That same content is there plus two more chapters. Obviously they have deleted quite a few. So you needed a couple of more, and they've added very decent okay chapters, right? Alternate investment may one chapter has been changed. One chapter you will discuss on the real estate forms of investments, right? Real estate का index कैसे बनता है? Real estate investments कैसे होता है? उसका valuation. So basically the rentals are like this. What is the PV? You calculate the PV. You find out the value of the real estate. Different approaches. You had the sales comparable approach. You had the income approach, and you had the uh, asset based approach. So using the approach, calculations are going to be there. That's the first chapter on real estate. Second chapter on real estate is going to discussing the going to be discussing the real estate investment trust. The second chapter will be discussing the real estate investment trust, and usse related fairly theoretical, easy, decent chapters are there. 
the third one is discussing about the private equity valuation private equity valuation very interesting stuff say for example and there will be difference between venture capital and lbo ka difference kya hai thoda detail mein private equity section samjhenge hedge fund is not covered anywhere in in your level 2 curriculum level 3 you'll have a little bit of hedge fund again and uh, private equity i'll give you an example suppose i am a startup guy i have my own startup today so if someone i need money to run my startup before the startup was started i was valuing the company at let's say 5 million or something if someone takes a 10% stake in my company by giving me 2 million dollars basically agar 10% is worth 2 million matlab mere paas 90% shares hai uska worth kitna hona chahiye that should be 18 million now after 5 years after 5 years he wants to again pump in money abhi hum log ka ratio kya tha i had 90% the person who invested in my company has got 10% stake after 5 years he infuses let's say 5 million dollars ab uske liye usko 10% milega ki 12% milega how do you calculate that to ek projected value hoga company ka let's say i am valuing that 10 years down the line the company will be 50 million suppose i'll have to do the timeline suppose 12th year pe i am valuing the company to be 50 million ये 50 मिलियन का पीवी ऑन दिस डेट एट लेट्स ए वेरी हाई 30 परसेंट डिस्काउंटिंग रेट बिकॉज इट्स वेरी रिस्की सपोज सो 30 परसेंट डिस्काउंटिंग रेट पे द वैल्यू ऑफ द कंपनी इज 34 इस बंदे से आई एम टेकिंग एन इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑफ लेट्स ए 14 इसका मतलब 14 का इन्वेस्टमेंट आया था उसके पहले बिफोर ही इन्वेस्टेड द वैल्यू ऑफ द कंपनी वॉज ट्वेंटी वो ट्वेंटी का पीवी इज द हंड्रेड परसेंट ऑफ द कंपनी टूडे दैट इज टू एंड एटीन द वन आई वॉज टेलिंग यू so i own 18 he owns 2 so right now i am 10% he is 90% after giving 14 uska percentage stake kitna hoga kaise valuation karenge if you not understood don't bother i'll obviously take one full class to do this right but is tarike se private equity valuation karna multiple rounds of funding hoga so that valuation will be there in the private equity chapter very interesting stuff right then in the last chapter of alternate investment real estate real estate investment trust third one was your private equity fourth is a commodity based chapter that's going to be fairly theoretical not numerical it's going to be easy chapter different types of commodity backwardation contango normal backwardation normal contango you'll be doing uh, those few terms prices increase ho raha hai market mein decrease ho raha hai now you can compare a gold forward with a oil forward with a natural gas forward say for example i'll talk about a energy forward तो एनर्जी फॉरवर्ड का क्या क्या टर्म्स होगा सो वील डू ऑल दो थिंग्स जनरली विंटर मंथ्स में द फॉरवर्ड प्राइसेस राइज बिफोर द विंटर्स बिकॉज यू आर अक्यूमुलेटिंग वी आर टॉकिंग फ्रॉम द यूएस परस्पेक्टिव बिकॉज दे नीड अ लॉट ऑफ एनर्जी टू हीट देयर हाउसेज बिकॉज इट्स वेरी सिवियर विंटर ओवर दैर तो वहां पर एनर्जी का प्राइसेज इंक्रीजेस उसकी क्योंकि स्टोरेज कॉस्ट लगा हुआ है एंड जैसे जैसे आप यूज करोगे एट द एंड ऑफ द विंटर तक फॉरवर्ड का प्राइसेस स्टार्ट क्लाइंबिंग डाउन because demand kam ho jayega to how the forward future prices are differing from a gold future with a commodity future of let's say an oil or with respect to a bean future or something that kind of stuff easy stuff quite a few terms very conceptual non numerical but conceptual so commodity ke bare mein aap padhenge alternate investment ka last chapter mein we're okay till here the last study session is going to be the last two study sessions is going to be on portfolio now portfolio has got significant changes done the portfolio has got a significant amount of changes done last batch mein kafi changes kar diya tha matlab almost pura hi portfolio change kar diya tha and is batch mein do chapters aur add kiya hai first study session has got the first one is talking about rrtt llu that is simple risk return objectives taxation time horizon liquidity and the legal issues and unique constraints so that's going to be pretty okay right the next chapter discusses multi factor models काफी सारा डिफरेंट डिफरेंट मॉडल्स हम लोग पढ़ेंगे यू ऑलरेडी डन दोज मॉडल्स राइट द फार्मा फ्रेंड्स मॉडल इन ऑल सो विल ट्राई टू एक्सटेंड दैट विल ट्राई टू फाइंड मोर स्टेटिस्टिकल मॉडल्स इन ऑल लेट्स से द रिटर्न इज इक्वल टू आर एफ प्लस बीटा वन इंटू आर एफ वन प्लस बीटा टू इंटू रिस्क फैक्टर टू प्लस बीटा थ्री इंटू रिस्क फैक्टर थ्री एंड स्पेशली सिंस योर क्वांस विल बी डन विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू द लीनियर रिग्रेशन इन ऑल यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट बेटर सो पोर्टफोलियो में मल्टी फैक्टर्स सो यू हैव लॉट ऑफ मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक मॉडल में हम लोग अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट जी ये सब यूज करेंगे मे बी एक फंडामेंटल फैक्टर मॉडल बनाएंगे जहां पर पी रेशियोज एंड द साइज ऑफ द कंपनी एंड द प्राइस टू बुक वैल्यू रेशियो ऑफ द कंपनी एंड द मोमेंटम ऑफ द कंपनी वील टेक दो फंडामेंटल फैक्टर्स एंड ट्राई टू वैल्यू द कंपनी ट्राई टू वैल्यू द रिटर्न 
मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक फैक्टर्स के बेसिस पर मॉडल बनाएंगे मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक मॉडल बोलेंगे फंडामेंटल फैक्टर्स के ऊपर में यू ट्राई टू फाइंड द मॉडल दैट यू कॉल इट एज द फंडामेंटल फैक्टर मॉडल सिंपल इजी द नेक्स्ट वन द नेक्स्ट वन मेजरिंग एंड मैनेजिंग मार्केट रिस्क दैट्स द न्यू चैप्टर दे इनकॉर्पोरेटेड न्यूमेरिकल बहुत ही कम है हार्डली कुछ है मार्केट रिस्क रिस्क बहुत तरीके का होता है यू हैव मार्केट रिस्क क्रेडिट रिस्क लिक्विडिटी रिस्क एंड ऑपरेशनल रिस्क इन जनरल मार्केट रिस्क इज कि अगर मार्केट में इंटरेस्ट रेट चेंज हुआ करेंसी रेट चेंज हुआ करेंसी चेंज होगा तो टी सी एस इज गोइंग टू गेट अफेक्टेड एक्सपोर्ट इम्पोर्ट रिलेटेड कंपनी इंटरेस्ट रेट चेंज होगा तो बॉन्ड वैल्यूएशन चेंजेस बैंकिंग सेक्टर गेट्स इम्पैक्टेड जी डी पी रेट्स चेंज होगा तो सारे ही कंपनीज के ऊपर इम्पैक्ट आएगा अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट रेट्स खराब या कम आएगा तो सारे कंपनीज पे इम्पैक्ट आएगा आई शेयर शेयर एन एग्जाम्पल अभी रिसेंटली यूएस में जनरली इंटरेस्ट रेट बढ़ता है आई एम गोइंग लिटल ऑफ ट्रैक यूएस में जनरली इंटरेस्ट रेट बढ़ता है तो इंडिया का मार्केट फॉल बिकॉज ऑफ यूएस इंटरेस्ट रेट इज कॉन गो अप यू विल डिस्काउंट द इंडियन कैश लो एट अ हायर रेट एंड देर फॉर द वैल्यूएशन शुड गो डाउन दैट्स वन रीजन सेकेंडरी रीजन एक्चुअली प्राइमरी रीजन इज कि अगर यूएस में इंटरेस्ट रेट बढ़ेगा तो सप्लाई ऑफ मनी विल फॉल शॉर्ट पीपल विल हैव टू लिक्विडेट फंड इन इंडिया एंड टेक इट बैक टू यूएस एंड इंडिया में आर मार्केट आर वेरी मच डिपेंडेंट ऑन द फाइनेंशियल मार्केट अब्रॉड वी हैव लॉड ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट फ्रॉम दी फॉरन इंस्टीट्यूशन इन्वेस्टर्स सो अगर हम लोग का पैसा से वो लोग विद्रॉ करेंगे देर बी लॉड ऑफ सेलिंग इन दी इंडियन मार्केट वहां यूएस में इंटरेस्ट रेट हाई हुआ मनी सप्लाई कम थी इंटरेस्ट रेट इंक्रीज इज मनी सप्लाई कम थी मनी सप्लाई कम थी मतलब देव टू ड्रॉ आउट फंड फ्रॉम आर कंट्री इसका मतलब इंडिया का फंड इज गोइंग टू गो डाउन करेक्ट एवरीबडी सो इसका मतलब अगर इंटरेस्ट रेट बढ़ता है तो इंडिया के लिए नुकसान है Now, US का भी रिसेंटली आई थिंक इट्स अबाउट द लास्ट मंथ का डेटा पे एम्प्लॉयमेंट अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट रेट्स केम आउट टू बी हायर साइड पर सो वेन यूएस इकोनॉमी डज बैड अदर इकोनॉमीज ऑल्सो डू बैड दैट्स अ जनरल आइडिया दैट इज यूएस इकोनॉमी का अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट डेटा हैज बीन पुअर इंडिया पे बाकी मार्केट्स पे अफेक्ट पड़ेगा बिकॉज द यूएस मार्केट इज डूइंग बैड यू आर सो इंटीग्रेटेड विद ऑल दी अदर मार्केट्स ओपन इकोनॉमी है ना क्लोज इकोनॉमी नहीं है राइट सो काफी इफेक्ट पड़ेगा अब नाउ इन दैट सिचुएशन व्हाट हैपेंस इज इन दैट सिचुएशन इंडिया का मार्केट पे खराब इफेक्ट होना चाहिए बट अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट रेट खराब आने के कारण यूएस रिक्वायर्स ग्रोथ यूएस रिक्वायर्स ग्रोथ यूएस विल नॉट इंक्रीज इंटरेस्ट रेट बिकॉज ऑफ दैट नॉट इंक्रीजिंग इंटरेस्ट रेट इंडियन मार्केट वेंट अप दैट डे सो यू कैनॉट जस्ट से अच्छा अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट रेट खराब है इंडियन मार्केट गोज बैड यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड यू हैव टू थिंक अबाउट लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंट फैक्टर्स अब ये सब चीज से क्या होता है वेन यू रीड दीज थिंग्स वेन यू अंडरस्टैंड दीज थिंग्स यू कैन लिंक विथ वॉट यूर स्टार्टिंग एंड सेकेंड टाइम जब अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट सपोज आपने इस बार ट्रेड किया कि अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट रेट वेंट बैड एंड यू बॉट यू सोल्ड स्टॉक्स आपका तो नुकसान हो जाएगा बिकॉज मार्केट्स वेंट अप ऑन दी एजामशन दैट इंटरेस्ट रेट विल नॉट बी इंक्रीज बिकॉज ऑफ दी अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट डेटा बींग रॉन्ग इस बार अगर सीख जाओगे ये चीज अगर ध्यान में रहेगा नेक्स्ट टाइम यू नॉट मेक द सेम मिस्टेक राइट सो यू शुड बी लर्निंग फ्रॉम वॉट्स हैपनिंग इन द इकोनॉमी that is why i'm asking you you have to start reading in all that so there's another chapter so market risk is going to be dependent on a lot of factors that market mein jo factors change hoga uske karan jo risk hai that is market risk operational risk is if there is a theft or a fraud or a, a system failure that is operational risk credit risk ke samne wala paisa nahi diya credit risk i gave him money he did not uh, pay me back that is credit risk right so these are the different risks that's there we are going to be discussing managing market risk so you discuss something like a value at risk and a couple of new measures of uh, uh, risk uh, apart from standard deviation uske alawa bhi to bahut sara measures hota hai so we'll be discussing a couple of new measures what is market risk how do you manage how do you hedge you use derivatives and all in quite a few new terms it will be quite interesting the next study session of uh, portfolio the first chapter is economics and investment market bahut hi simple sa easy sa chapter hai In the first class of quants in level वन I had discussed कि अपना जो required rate होता है that has three components: real rate, uh, inflation premium and a risk premium. Real rate दिया जाता है for a com is a compensation for deferred consumption. Instead of consuming today, you will be buying something after a year. That is why you get real rate. Say for example, the bank is giving you सेवन परसेंट वन की जगह यू विल गेट वन पॉइंट जीरो सेवन आफ्टर अयर द इन्फ्लेशन रेट इज सपोज फोर परसेंट राइट सो आज मैं जो चीज वन डॉलर में खरीद सकता था आई कैन बाय द सेम स्टफ फॉर वन पॉइंट जीरो फोर डॉलर लेटर आफ्टर इयर सो बेसिकली वेन द बैंक इज गिविंग मी वन पॉइंट जीरो सेवन डॉलर आई कैन परचेज एक्स्ट्रा गुड्स इन सर्विस ओनली विद पॉइंट जीरो थ्री डॉलर सो द रियल रिटर्न इज गोइंग टू बी दैट पॉइंट जीरो थ्री से 
right that real return is because i did not consume something today i am consuming it after a year so the deferred compensation ke liye i am getting a compensation over there that is a real return inflation return is to restore it's a compensation for loss of purchasing power for what i could have purchased today for 1 dollar i can purchase that for 1.04 dollars so my 1 dollar ka buying capacity has gone down na जो सामान वन डॉलर आज खरीद सकता था वही सामान वन पॉइंट जीरो फोर डॉलर खरीद सकता है तो वन डॉलर कैन परचेज लेस अमाउंट ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज सो आई एम कॉम्पेंसेटेड फॉर फोर परसेंट फॉर दैट बैंक में नहीं इन्वेस्ट कर इन्वेस्ट करके कंपनी का अगर बॉन्ड में इन्वेस्ट करते कंपनी कैन डिफॉल्ट द गवर्नमेंट विल नॉट डिफॉल्ट सो क्रेडिट रिस्क वेन यू इन्वेस्ट इन इक्विटी देर इज अन अदर रिस्क बिजनेस रिस्क एन ऑल एडेड इक्विटी रिस्क प्रीमियम सो वो चैप्टर क्या कर रहे हैं ना द नेक्स्ट वन द इकोनॉमिक्स एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट मार्केट वो फर्स्ट में real rate real plus inflation real plus inflation plus credit risk real plus inflation plus credit risk plus maturity real plus inflation plus credit plus maturity plus equity premium so the whole chapter is developing this it will take me hardly half an hour 40 minutes to do that chapter very simple chapter pura chapter ek ek step karke wo equation wo return ko develop kar raha hai based on economic factors simple chapter the next one is analysis of active portfolio management it's a little complicated a couple of formulas we'll not be able to derive it in the class but we'll understand the formulas you'll have to learn a few formulas a couple of formulas in this chapter theek hai thoda sa complicated formula is level pe we cannot we cannot prove all the formulas so yahan par do teen formulas rahega jo aapko yaad karna hoga active management matlab kya agar aapko lagta hai ki market is perfectly priced you cannot earn alpha Jensen's alpha you'll not be able to earn because the markets are correctly priced. If I want to earn alpha, I need to do active management. What do you mean by active management? If Nifty has got 50 stocks, let's say Nifty is the market. I'm assuming Nifty to be a market. Nifty ne agar 10% ICICI mein dala hai. Nifty ka 10% weightage is to ICICI. My benchmark should my portfolio should also have 10% ICICI. But active management would be not buying ICICI ka weightage should not be 10% but 8% because I expect it to perform poorly. ICO motor ka weightage should not be 2% but rather 3.5% because I think it's going to perform better. So how much return I'm getting from active management? How much from passive management? Is the active management good for me? Am I generating returns or not? So analyzing the active management and the return portion, how much of an alpha is the manager generating? Those kind of things we are going to be studying in the active management wala portion. Thoda sa complicated ho sakta hai. A little bit, not too much. Right? That is what we study in the active management part of the portfolio. and the last chapter is again a new chapter that has been added algorithmic trading and high frequency trading uh you've done technical analysis in level 1 it's not technical analysis ex exactly but the thoda sa na terms terms wala chapter hai it's a small 4 5 7 page content but a lot of new terms that you'll have to learn technology in trading algorithmic trading you're not going to be doing trading you're not going to be doing a lot of formulas or anything as such you're going to be understanding what each term means टेक्निकल एनालिसिस में सारा टर्म्स पता किए थे ना वैसे यहाँ पे सारा टर्म्स पता करेंगे हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी ट्रेडिंग कुड बी बाइंग अ गुड नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स एंड सेलिंग देम साइमल्टेनियसली विद इन मिली सेकेंड्स बेस्ड ऑन समथिंग से फॉर एग्जांपल द कोरिलेशन ऑफ एसबीआई एंड आईसीआईसीआई बैंक हैज ऑलवेज बीन बिटवीन द लेवल ऑफ पॉइंट टू पॉइंट सपोज द मोमेंट आई सी द कोरिलेशन हैज गॉन टू पॉइंट आई विल डू सर्टन काइंड ऑफ ट्रेड कोरिलेशन पेयर ट्रेडिंग दो शेयर्स है उनका आपस का रिलेटिव मूवमेंट हमेशा ऐसा है सडनली मैंने देखा कि उनका मूवमेंट ऐसा जा गया मतलब दोनों का प्राइसेस कन्वर्ज होना चाहिए सो यू ट्राई टू ट्रेड ऑन दैट यू ट्राई टू ट्रेड ऑन को रिलेशन यू ट्राई टू ट्रेड ऑन वॉलेटिलिटी हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी ट्रेडिंग एल्गोरिदम बनाओगे कुछ फॉर्मुलाज वगैरह वगैरह बनाओगे बेस्ड ऑन पास प्राइसेस एंड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दोज फॉर्मुलाज यू ट्राई टू डू सर्टन काइंड ऑफ ट्रेडिंग दैट इज एल्गोरिदमिक ट्रेडिंग हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी ट्रेडिंग एंड ऑल सो इट्स वेरी थियोरेटिकल interesting it's not bad theory it's interesting theoretical just terms and terms and all that you'll need to remember that's your syllabus for level 2 that's the whole syllabus for level 2 level 1 ka syllabus very interesting level 2 ka syllabus is equally or rather more interesting level 3 mein thoda sa kabhi kabhi lagta hai ki you know thoda kuch kuch portion thoda irritating ho gaya hai matlab thoda sa numerical kam ho jata hai level 2 is very much numerical build your base very strong i would always suggest that लेवल वन का कोई भी एरिया जहां पर भी यूज होगा आई रिवाइज इट इफ यू हैव अ प्रॉब्लम यू ऑलवेज लेट मी नो मोस्ट ऑफ द लेवल वन स्टफ वी वट एवर इज रिक्वायर्ड आई आई ब्रीफली डू गो अबाउट इट यूर ऑल्सो अलाउड टू अटेंड लेवल वन का कोई क्लास इफ यू वॉन्ट टू इन केस यू नो लाइक से फॉर एक्जाम्पल फिक्स इनकम इज अ प्रॉब्लम फिक्स इनकम इज गोइंग ऑन ड्यूरेशन कन्वेक्सरी विल हैपन ड्यूरेशन कन्वेक्सरी नॉट रिक्वायर्ड इन लेवल टू बट लेवल थ्री यू नीड इट सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू अटेंड ड्यूरेशन का क्लास इन लेवल वन यूर मोर देन वेलकम टू डू सो 
so in case you have a problem with derivatives ka basics of options you are more than welcome to attend a level 1 options ka class just to brush up a little bit so that's your 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 prerogative but uh, वैसे you will not need utna zyada level 1 but it's always it's obvious the reit hedge fund wagera pata hona chahiye private equity wagera kya hai alternate investment to aise bhi pura online hai so you can see alternate investments on the website so go to the website resources mein video section mein sara videos diya hua hai you can always access that बी वाई बी डी वाई अगर भूल गए हो ऑब्वियसली बी वाई बी डी वाई पता होना चाहिए की कॉन्सेप्ट करके भी सी एफ ए का मेन्यू में की कॉन्सेप्ट का कुछ वीडियोज है सो यू कैन सी दो टेन फिफ्टीन मिनट्स वीडियोज इफ यू वॉन्ट अ क्लैरिटी ऑन ए बी एस एम बी एस और एन इंटरेस्ट रेट और लेट से बॉन्ड का डिफरेंट टर्म्स लाइक से फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस इज सिलेबस आई जस्ट इरेज दिस सपोज आई आस्क यू द डिफरेंस बिटवीन What's the difference between this? Or if I ask you the difference between YTM, IRR, BEY, coupon rate, yield to call, yield to worst, कुछ भूला? what's the difference between all these so if you are conceptually clear you should know all the differences if you understand you should know the differences between these cost of equity kya hai cost of equity is basically ki aaj company aaj company is raising equity so if i put in 100 dollars over here how much do i how much do i need to earn for these people like cost of renting this place suppose suppose i'm renting this place so cost of renting this place is let's say 120000 per month so that becomes the cost of the renting the place agar aap company ko paise denge you will ask for an interest that is cost of debt so if i as an investor i'm going to invest in the company that is the cost of equity how much of return do i need to generate the company will have to give that much of return to these equity guys right so company ke perspective se that is the cost of equity return on equity ye uh, re ka agar baat karoge that is the required rate of return from the investors perspective आर ई विल बी कैलकुलेटेड यूजिंग आर एफ प्लस आर एम माइनस आर एफ बीटा कि इतना सिस्टमैटिक रिस्क है तो मेरे को इतना रिटर्न चाहिए इन अ परफेक्ट मार्केट यू कैन अज्यूम आर ई एंड के ई विल बी इक्वल बट वे कुड बी द डिफरेंस बी सपोज मैंने हंड्रेड डॉलर कंपनी को दिया मैं हंड्रेड डॉलर पर आर ई डिमांड करूंगा आफ्टर इश्यूएंस कॉस्ट एंड ऑल द कंपनी रिसीव ओनली नाइनटी नाइन एंड हाफ कंपनी विल हैव टू अर्न दैट सपोज आई एम डिजायरिंग ट्वेल्व परसेंट रिटर्न मेरा आर ई है बेस्ड ऑन बीटा ऑफ द कंपनी आई नीड ट्वेल्व परसेंट रिटर्न I will need, I gave the company hundred dollars. I need twelve dollars in return. Company ko issuance cost ke baad khali ninety nine and half mila. Ninety nine and half pe company ko twelve ka mana padega. So twelve on ninety nine and half will become the cost of equity to the company. You getting the difference? Generally we do not take any difference. Generally we use R E K E dono ko ek barabar use karte hain. Corporate finance mein to you did that formula only. K E ka calculation ka three method tha. Either R E R F plus R M minus R F beta or a bond plus risk premium approach or D one by P zero plus G. These were the three formulas you used to calculate K E. So K E R E we generally use it synonymously. But then you should know the difference between the two. When you talk about return on equity, that is a balance sheet ratio. a cruel concept ke basis par not on market price but on the book value of equity return on equity is balance sheet ke hisab se jo equity tha retained earnings and all included that was the denominator and the numerator is net income if i purchase the stock at 100 and sold it at 120 that 20 is not the return on return on equity the return on equity is the return which the company generated on its own income statement you are getting it it has got nothing to do with what i earned when you are talking about roe you getting the logic that's the balance sheet income statement ko lekar ke expected return re ko compare karoge suppose i want to invest a uh, 100 dollars in a stock today mere ko lagta hai ki wo stock 14% 15% dega that's the expected return after one year suppose i invested the 100 dollar i'm expecting a 14% return based on my dcf analysis and all after one year after one year suppose uh the company gave a return of only 12 and 1/2% that is the actual return required return is jo chahiye at Ex expected return is jo expect kar raha hu jo dega hone ke baad mein jo diya that is actual return and if expected return i am expecting 14 based on the risk the company should be giving me only 
that means er is greater than re i am getting more than what i need undervalued stock we'll discuss this portfolio mein sab kiye the level 1 mein you discount the future cash flows using re had you discounted using expected return market value aata have you dis had you discounted using re intrinsic value aayega so that clarity is required so that's that's a basic difference between these ye sab bhi key concepts mein sab milega ye bhi ek video milega where you'll have the difference between these things right spot rate aaj ka rate forward rate future ka rate yield to maturity when you calculate the irr of the bond that is ytn अगर उसको डबल करना पड़ा बिकॉज सेमी एनुअल कूपन है दैट इज वाई टी एम एंड वाई टी एम इफ इट इज अ बॉन्ड विच इज पेइंग सेमी एनुअल कूपन एंड वेन यू एक्सप्रेस वाई टी एम इन द फॉर्मेट एक्स परसेंट पर आनम कंपाउंडेड सेमी एनुअली इट इज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ बी वाई सो वाई टी एम आई आर एन बी वाई कुड बी वेरी सिनोनिमस यू कुड गेट वेरी कंफ्यूज बेसिकली वेन यू कैलकुलेट दी आई आर ऑफ द बॉन्ड दैट इज नोन एज द वाई टी एम ऑफ द बॉन्ड बिकॉज इफ यू होल्ड द बॉन्ड अंटिल मेच्योरिटी यू रियलाइज दो कैश फ्लोज that is why you called it ytm because if you hold it maturity only then will you realize that irr that is why irr for the bond is known as ytm and the ytm has to be stated on a per annum basis when your bond has a annually compounding coupon annually pay annual pay coupon it's going to be x percent per annum that's not by but when you express the uh, the thing coupon as an x percent per annum compounded semi annually basis per that is known as by that is a form that is a way that is a method in which you are representing the bond equivalent yield right coupon rate is we have already discussed i think or coupon rate is going to be coupon rate whatever is the rate into face value current yield is a coupon amount the annual coupon amount irrespective of whether it's a semi annual quarterly whatever pay bond pura saal mein jo coupon mila divide by the market price is what i am earning in the current year the current yield spot rate is aaj invest kiya 2 saal ke liye 5 saal ke liye spot rate दो साल बाद इफ आई वॉन्ट टू इन्वेस्ट फॉर थ्री इयर्स फॉरवर्ड रेट इफ इंस्टेड ऑफ यूजिंग ऑल द कैश फ्लोज अंटिल मेच्योरिटी आई यूज द कैश फ्लोज अंटिल द फर्स्ट कॉल जब फर्स्ट टाइम कॉल होगा ईल टू फर्स्ट कॉल एनी वेज वाई टी सी वाई टी डब्ल्यू नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट विल डू इट वेन वी स्टार्ट विद फिक्स इनकम बट यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑल दीज थिंग सो दिस इज अ वे वी आर गोइंग टू गो अबाउट इट सो यू स्टार्ट ऑफ यू कैन ऑर्डर योर श्वाइजर बुक्स यू स्टार्ट ऑफ विद योर श्वाइजर कंटेंट यू डोंट हैव टू डू एनीथिंग पैरेलली करते रहना है खाली मैं पढ़ाऊंगा आप वही चीज श्वाइजर से अपडेट करते रहना श्वाइजर के अलावा जो एक्स्ट्रा होगा आई गिव इट टू यू प्रैक्टिस बुक्स स्टार्ट ऑफ विद द सेकंड प्रैक्टिस बुक इट्स एडवाइजेबल टू थ्री पेपर्स यू डू कॉपरेट फाइनेंस कॉपरेट फाइनेंस खत्म हुआ यू डू टू थ्री पेपर्स आई स्टार्ट विद डेरेवेटिव यू कंप्लीट डेरेवेटिव यू डू अनादर टू थ्री पेपर्स अलॉन्ग विद इट सो यू कीप ऑन डूइंग द पेपर्स दो तीन पेपर अभी कर लो दो तीन पेपर बाद में कर लेना और जो एक्स्ट्रा प्रैक्टिस लगेगा इन सर्टन कंटेंट सर्टन एरियाज लाइक पेंशन और समथिंग आई लास्ट यू टू प्रैक्टिस मोर आई कीप ऑन टेलिंग यू बिटवीन द क्लासेस की ये वाला चैप्टर के लिए इंस्टीट्यूट मटीरियल द ई बुक दैट यू गेट फ्रॉम द इंस्टीट्यूट उससे प्रैक्टिस कर लो बट ज्यादा वहां से नहीं करना पड़ेगा बोलो एनी क्वेश्चन एनी एनी डाउट सो फार यू सपोज टू बी कंप्लीटिंग द सिलेबस बाई मिड अप्रिल मैक्सिम एंड ऑफ अप्रिल सो दैट यू हैव अबाउट फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी डेज ऑफ रिविजन एंड प्रैक्टिस एंड देन अगेन फाइव सेवन डे ऑफ क्विक रिविजन इट्स नॉट गॉन बी दैट डिफिकल्ट इट्स ईजी फेली द कंटेंट हैज बीन कट डाउन लिटिल बिट रादर सो इट्स गुड गुड स्टफ गुड कंटेंट बोलो एनी इशूज सो फार एनी प्रॉब्लम यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग द कंटेंट यू लाइकिंग द कंटेंट आई गेस इट्स क्वाइट क्वाइट इंटरेस्टिंग एक्चुअली सो दिस इज मोर लेस दिस हाउ यू नीड टू स्टडी थोड़ा बहुत शॉर्टन वगैरह करते रहना शुरू शुरू में बता दूंगा कैसे शॉर्टन कर सकते हो कैसे ईजी कर सकते हो समरी नोट्स वगैरह भी आप लोग को मिल जाएगा फॉर्मूला शीट्स वगैरह भी मिल जाएगा बट ऑलवेज आई एडवाइज की क्रिएट योर ओन सफा फॉर्मूला शीट इज ऑलवेज ईजियर टू अंडरस्टैंड विथ योर ओन हैंड राइटिंग सो दैट आर कीप वर्किंग विथ यू गाइज एक एडवाइस और दूंगा कि जो जो गलती होता है लाइक कई बार होता है स्टूडेंट्स मेक अ मिस्टेक लेवल वन में कि पी वी एफ पी दे ऑलवेज पुट इट इन द सेम साइन सो यू कीप अ मिडिल शीट इन ऑल द फाइव बुक्स जो जो गलती होता है द मिस्टेक्स यू मेक यू नो दैट दीज आर द सिली मिस्टेक्स आर मेकिंग कीप नोटिंग दोज सो यू हैव अ लिस्ट ऑफ ट्वेंटी मिस्टेक्स दैट यू मेक सो उससे होगा क्या ना एग्जाम के टाइम यू रीड दोज एंड यू कॉन्शियसली नॉट मेक दोज मिस्टेक्स सो एग्जाम ट्रिक्स एंड ऑल आई स्टार्ट ऑफ आई आई कीप गिविंग यू इन बिटवीन टूवर्ड्स द एंड ही दूंगा मैक्सिमम बट गलती क्या क्या होता है बीच बीच में बताते रहूंगा यहाँ पे ये मिस्टेक होता है कि टेक केयर ऑफ दिस यहाँ ये गलती बहुत करते हो टेक केयर ऑफ दिस सो दिस इज मॉडल एस दी होल ऑफ लेवल टू कंटेंट बोलो कोई क्वेश्चन है तो बताओ